Hey guys, Jess here. I am back with another organization video, but tonight um, I thought it would just be good to share with you guys all the different ways I store my embellishments. Um, as part of like the craft room cleanup group and my interactions uh, with different people and different crafters, there a common theme is I don't know what to do with my embellishments. It is so hard. I, I have a hard time organizing them. And it is very hard because there are all different kinds. There are collections, there are themes, you know, um, and it's it's getting them into uh, uh, some sort of system or, or, or organizing them in a fashion of which you'll know where they are, you'll be able to seek them out and you'll actually use them. So I thought I would run through my whole gamut <laughs> of embellishment organization. Um, and the reason I want to do that is one, I want to give you ideas. But two, I also want to show you that I use various different methods to store all of my embellishments. It's not a one solution fits all. So um, I want you to really think about that. And the reason it's one solution, uh, the reason I have many solutions um, is because the type um, of embellishment, it's also because of various collections I like to keep together. It's um, also because of how I seek them out. Um, so there's lots of different reasons I store them differently. And so, yeah, I just thought it would be helpful to you guys to just walk through my method. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, so, um, and since the questions cropped up quite a bit lately, I thought, hey, why not? Let's share how I organized my embellishments. So this is just kind of demonstrating a, a, an example of the different kinds of embellishments that you get. You know, obviously there is, you know, flair and dimensional pieces as well. You know, there's just tons of different styles. So let, let me start off by saying if it's in, if it's in a kit, for example, um, you know, one of my hip kits or a collection, I have a Vicky Booten collection, I keep those all together in my envelope systems. And you guys have seen these before time and time again. So I keep everything together, all my kits together until I've used them so much I'm ready to to um, decouple them or you know split them up. Um, it is really important with any sort of organization and you guys are gonna be you're gonna roll your eyes at me because you're like just you say this every single time. I do because it's it's how you're gonna be successful. <laughs> so I will be a repeating record because you know it's it's just the truth. You need to understand how you seek out your supplies before you do any sort of organizing. You need to pay attention to how you craft, how you pull your project together. Because until you understand that, you're going to continue to struggle with your organization systems and how you seek your supplies out. So for me, how I craft is I craft by collection and then I craft by theme. And my themes are mainly holidays, fall, Halloween, Christmas, um, and I and I am starting to build a bit of a birthday collection as well. Um, everything else, did I say collection already? <laughs> I think I might have. So collection, you know, and and theme. And my themes are Christmas, fall, Halloween, and then I've got a birthday one started. Yeah, I think I covered it. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, it's a little late, and I'm. A little loopy so anyway so that is how I craft and that is how I seek out my supplies in general now let's dig in a little deeper though so if it's not in a collection right and it's not necessarily in a theme or it's a certain type of embellishment for example uh, enamel dots or wood veneer how do I seek those out and so that's kind of where your category, categorization and your containers come in, right? Those are a little bit more specific supplies. And uh, so that is a little bit 
um, you have to cater to those a little bit differently. And um, I'll show you how I organize those, but for those I generally seek them out by, again, theme or shape or color. Um, and so when I organize them, I organize them that way. And I think this will make sense as I move along and, and show you my storage options. But this is, this is the first one. This is the largest category. This is my macro category, if you will. And these are kits. So when I get a kit, hip kit, Coco Daisy, you know, a Vicky Booten, crepe paper, whatever have you, whatever kit I get and it's a collection all together, I keep it together until I've used it up to my, to how I feel content and I'm ready to decouple it. So this is organization number one. Now when I start using these kits and for example I open this ephemera package, right, obviously I'm not going to fight with this original product packaging to put these back in. So in that instance once I open these up I put them in CD sleeves. So these are 5x5 five five plastic CD sleeves and I will link the item below. I get them on Amazon. Really inexpensive. And then I add a little velcro dot so they stay closed. And so once these open up and they still go with the kit, I plop them in here. And they fit beautifully in these envelopes. They don't, you know, they're not falling all over the place because they're loose. It's a slim, easy containment system. And these travel well too. So from here to here. So that is my first um, stop when it comes to embellishment organization, my ephemera, if you will, um, in my kits. So, I love these CD sleeves. So, for if I buy ephemera packs that are loose, right, I have, for example, this is a Chamel uh, pack of ephemera. I don't have a Chamel collection and I wanted to keep these together, so therefore I keep it in this envelope and I put them in a bin. You can label them if you want on the corner. You can put the packaging label in here if you want. And a lot of these fit in a fridge bin, a drawer, a basket. You can get, you can really maximize uh, your storage with these little envelopes. Really efficient, very inexpensive. Great, great system. So for those ephemera that don't go with any collection, and I, and I, they don't belong essentially anywhere else in my storage system. They go in these envelopes. So let's, let's see here. Let's kind of go through, I wonder if it makes sense to kind of just show you as I go through one of these kits. So say, say I was done with this kit and I was going to destash it. So I, um, I show you guys, I have these ephemera packs. So, I'm actually, let's see, I'm trying to think if this is a good way to show you. <laughs> so, I have, let's, let's keep going with ephemera. So, for ephemera, after, from the envelopes, um, I uh, also, my, my next level to ephemera, if you will, is these awesome divided containers from Amazon. And again, I'll link everything that I can below in the description. It has this fabulous tray on the top, this divider tray, and then all these little adjustable compartments with these dividers below here. And so I have four of these as of right now, I think I'm going to add a fifth, but I have four. And so this one you're looking at is all my Coco Vanilla Boys Ephemera. Because I had so many collections and I, and I had opened them all up that it was getting to the point that I just needed to combine them. And the colors all match in those collections, so it didn't matter to me that I mixed them all in. So I do the same, I have an Amy Tan bin, so let me show you that. So here's another one. And so majority of this is Amy Tangerine, but I do have a couple of other collections in here that I felt like the colors and theme kind of jived together. And so I just kind of have some separation, some larger ephemera pieces here, 
some labels and tags and words up here. And then we got florals, some puffy stickers, some bows, envelopes, some more banners. So I've kind of sectioned them off a little bit. So what I would do is if I'm done with my kit and I'm ready to de-stash these, I would take all of the leftover Amy Tan pieces and I would fit them in to this storage unit here. And they would just go in collectively with the rest of my ephemera. Because once I'm done with a collection, I, t I seek out my ephemera by the type of ephemera it is. Like, I seek out my florals, I seek out butterflies, tags, labels. So it's not so much by color for me, it is by type of, type of ephemera. But I do organize, organize them kind of by collection, if you will, or style. Because, like I said, this most of this is Amy Tan. But there is some, I think there's a little Vicky Booten thrown in here as well, and some other pieces from collections that I felt matched the same color and vibe. So I would just break down this ephemera pack into this ephemera box. So when I'm working with this color scheme or an Amy Tan paper or this style, I would just bring this box to my desk and I would pick out pieces from this bin. So I end up merging those collections together because um, I've gotten to the point where um, I recognize, number one, I recognize most of the manufacturers, but number two, um, I don't really, you know, I, I just don't really care to um, keep everything so separate anymore. It's kind of become irrelevant for me as I scrap, I scrap. And even though I do process videos, I can reference most of the time what I'm using, but oftentimes I'm so far behind in my scrapbooking that you can't always get the product anymore. So it's it was too much work for me to keep everything and it took up, in some regards, too much space and it wasn't working for me to keep everything separated by manufacturer. So I moved away from that and con combined some. But I really, really, really love this system a lot. Um, and these containers are amazing. So again, link below. So we've gone from kit, little envelopes, to these cases. Now, I store my ephemera in another way. So these are my, my kit collection, my manufacturer, designer ephemera, if you will. So then it comes to my holidays. So my big one is Christmas. And I have a lot, I have, um, and I'll have a room tour coming up soon, I promise. Um, but I, I love the Allie Edwards products, those are probably my favorite, but I have a lot of other Christmas um, supplies. And originally I had them in a drawer, let me show you, in a container like this. But I quickly outgrew the system for Christmas, but as you can see, I use this for some of my Halloween. It's a great container. I got it from Ikea. These little um, boxes come out. So I've got my DIY embellishments in here, some flair, some cupcake holders, some washi wood veneer, and stickers. So I, I had done the same thing for Christmas, but it just grew so big that this system, I couldn't contain it anymore. Um, but this is another really great option to grab and go and put it on your desk and everything's visual it's very pretty <laughs> it's fun to look at um, so little containers um, drawer organizers is another really great way um, to organize your supplies but uh, for my Christmas I had ephemera in here um, but what was happening was that all my different ephemera pieces were just I'd have to pick through them and like I said earlier when I go to um, choose my ephemera I'm looking for what type it is like is it a is it a flower or a Christmas bulb a snowman a snowflake like a poinsettia or a banner or a tag that's how I seek out my uh, ephemera generally speaking so with all the ephemera just tossed in those containers I was having to sift through everything and it was becoming cumbersome and so I decided to separate everything out into categories 
and I keep them in the iris containers. The or the four by these are I don't think these are Iris brand, but you guys know what I mean. The 4x6 photo containers. I get these ones at Hobby Lobby. I love them because they have this little tray that they sit in. So these go right on a shelf. And so what I did was I took each... I, I separated out all my ephemera by category, by how I would seek it out, right, when I was creating. So I have frames. I have Christmas trees. I have snowflakes, I have florals, I have hearts, and I have stars. That's just the start of it, but you guys kind of hopefully get a sense of um, my categorization of my supplies. But this is how I would seek things out. So just imagine these all mixed in with all your, with everything else, right? It just again, it became cumbersome and it wasn't working for me. It, I felt like I could be more efficient. So now I can go through and be like, I'm gonna do a layout with Christmas trees on it. I grab my one container and I'm off, right? Or I need some frames. There you go. So I also do this with um, the tiny words from Allie Edwards. They fit beautifully in these containers. I also do it for my Project Life cards that come with um that are christmas themed i keep these separate from my regular project life organization because to, these are all project related they're all holiday theme related so i keep it all together i got some tiny numbers i and i have some puffy stickers in this tray and so i have two more of these with other shapes and ephemera pieces like characters and reeves and snowman and tags and I tell you what, I absolutely love this system for my Christmas. It's been a game changer. I love how everything is separated out and categorized. Um, well, this one's backwards. Um, it just, it's been a game changer. Really love the system. Um, and the photo containers are fairly inexpensive. Um, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have 24 of these in one of my shelves. So I have the Michaels uh, Tidy Cubes that have the shelf in the middle. And so four of these fit on one of those shelves. And I have three shelves dedicated to these containers. So they do take up a little bit more room. However, um, the, the micro categorization that I'm able to achieve with the system, well worth taking up the real estate in my opinion. And I could label these if I wanted to. I haven't found the need to, but that's also an option. And then let me just show you, I do the same thing with my Halloween. So you guys saw my little tray of Halloween that had more like the wood veneer and the more bulky dimensional pieces. This is my Halloween ephemera. So here's all the tags, all like the banners and phrases, words. Um, die cut words, ghosts and skeletons and characters. Ooh. I had a ton of like florals and leaves and stars, so I put those in here. And then this was a vintage collection, I think October afternoon, so I kept that separate. But this is all my Halloween ephemera categorized. And again, it makes it so easy, so, so easy. Well, this case is just broken, I think. It doesn't want to close. I'll have to get a new one. Um, I love it, love it, love it. And so they sit right on my shelf, and I can see them quite easily just from the front. I know which ones are Halloween and Christmas. It just it work, works great. And you can also buy the iris containers that, that hold, I think, 16 or 20 of these, and they have the handle. And though those fit beautifully in the Michaels tidy unit tidy cubes as well. So, and what I also love about these is that they're portable. I'm a traveling scrapbooker. I go to crops. So I can pull a kit together and grab these containers and toss them in my bag. Easy, right? I don't have to rethink my storage when I'm traveling. So win, win, win all the way around. Love these. All right, so back to this tray. So you guys saw this tray 
which had my Halloween themed wood veneer, some large ephemera I made, some cupcake washi, and flare badges. So let's talk more about the, the flare badges. So again, I had a ton of flare and I started kind of with the drawer organization system and again it, it was working but not it wasn't great um, and so I got this idea from Allie Allie Edwards watching her videos and I absolutely love it and I use the well these are I think fish tackle boxes <laughs> But um, there's a whole bunch of different hobby boxes for beads and jewelry and, you know, little compartments for all of the little crafty things. I just happened to get these at a local store. I like them because um, they're a little round on the bottom, so they're easy to, like, grab these little pieces. And they came in two different sizes, or I think they actually come in three different sizes. I do, these are on Amazon as well, and I have a link. Um, but I loved how she separated out her chipboard and shapes pieces and so I have done the same and I have let me I, I've got a couple of examples here but I have three dedicated to Christmas Christmas wood veneer Christmas chipboard and numbers three of these and again I love that everything is like micro categorized I can see it all I don't have to sift through different shapes to reach what I'm looking for. It's, it, and I can bring it right to my desk. Um, it's just a really great system. Um, and I'm very much a, a, a micro organizer. Like I really like to categorize very granularly and this just meets my need. It's how I seek out my embellishments. Like if I'm creating a layout and I'm like, oh, I want some wooden arrows. Now I can go in and see I have multiple different styles and I can come and, you know, choose what style I want. Or I want some wooden hearts. I mean, stars. All They're all right here in one place. Um, and again, these I also have on my Michael's Tidy Cubes. And they, again, they fit great. Um, three high in a shelf but I actually have these on the unit that has the adjustable shelves so you could you know make them work however you want so I've got six of these larger ones um, I think three of them are dedicated to wood veneer and then two of them are chipboard and felt and then one is the numbers for Christmas and then I have the smaller guys for my acrylic flare, badges, bows, all my little bits and pieces. And again, I got a tiny container because these pieces are relatively small. And so they'll fill a lot before I need to upgrade my storage. So I've got some of the smaller ones for my smaller pieces. And again, this works really well for flare. And as you can see, I have this one solely dedicated to stars. I have another one dedicated to hearts because those are my favorite shapes. And they're just organized by color. And then I have one for bows and flare badges, which is the round little badges. And then acrylic pieces, other shapes, right? Just random other shapes. And it's worked fabulous for me. It, this system's really worked well. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. So that's your dimensional flare pieces. Okay, so then I think we've covered all of our like loose ephemera. So now let's go back to our kit here. So we now have seen how I handle this stuff. So now let's talk about stickers, right? We've got stickers and thickers. So again, if we were dissecting this kit, what would I, how would I organize those? Okay. So, again, a couple of different ways I do this. So if I was, it's not a one size fits all. So, for stickers, I have two of these 
containers from Joann's. I don't know who makes them. I think maybe, well, it might be Happy Planner. Um, yep, there we go. Me and my big ideas for the Happy Planner. So this is designed to keep planner stickers in, but I keep all of my sticker books in this one. And then the other one, I keep sheets of stickers in here and larger dimensional hearts and labels and some chipboard pieces that I haven't de-stashed yet. <laughs> kind of a little bit of everything. Um, these chipboard pieces will eventually go into my, I'm actually going to pull these out because these will go into my tackle boxes. But um, puffy stickers, right? Just a little bit of everything in here. Easy grab and go and easy to flip through. Um, and I did that because um, I like I like the ease of, of, I don't know, I like looking through these from a file perspective. These certainly aren't travel friendly because everything is just in this file system, but it works really well for these sticker booklets for sure. And I think I got a deal on the two of these, so I decided to use the rest of them for these puffy stickers. But um, this, so for these stickers, I have another system I do as well. And you guys have seen that before, which is one I also like. And that's the binder system. So I use these little, oh, I'm out of focus here, sorry. Come on camera. Um, I use these little, I don't know what size these are. <laughs> I can't remember. But these small three ring binders. And I keep all of my tiny alphas, tiny words, and other like rub-ons and other stickers. I've kind of moved away from the stickers in this system. That's why I have the file, but I still have a couple binders. But these work really great for the tiny alphas and the tiny words, and I can label them. And it's kind of like flipping through a catalog, right? Which is really nice. And it worked pretty well for the stickers too, don't get me wrong. Um, I just had the extra container, so I put some of the stickers in there. But again, organization isn't always a one-size-fits-all. So this is another really great option, not only for your alphas, but these sticker sets fit perfectly in there too. And they you fit a lot in these little binders, so it doesn't take up a lot of real estate, which is a big win. And then I also do, I started doing a binder for my chipboard and because, um, and, and I haven't really moved away from the system, but I will tell you, I don't reach for it very often, but it's not because I don't like the system. It's because me and chipboard, you know, graphic chipboard pieces, not basic shapes and words, um, I struggle with using. But this has been really great. I also tried putting my sticker collections in this binder too. I will tell you, um, I forget to look here for my stickers. So I'll show you my sticker organization, my six by 12 in a minute. Um, so for me, once I use these up, I probably won't do this for stickers again. It just didn't, it just didn't work for me. But for chipboard, and let me get there. There we go. These are all stickers in the front. Um, but the chipboard pieces, this works really well. Oh, we gotta put that one in there. Um, I could condense, I could get a lot on the sheet. They're, um, the collections are kept together and you can see everything at a glance. Instead of having the big 12 by 12 or six by 12 sheets with the the chipboard that always pop off, right? It's a nuisance. So this really worked well for the chipboard. And like I said, I started adding stickers too. Here's a lot more chipboard. But for me, it doesn't work so well with stickers. I seek them out differently. But a great system for chipboard. 
Love it, love it. So that is your, another option for stickers and chipboard is the binder. And again, you fit a ton of product in a single binder. And if real estate, if you have very minimal space, I really encourage you looking into the binder systems because you can really maximize your storage. Okay. All right, so last but not least, I think we are at, oh, we got a couple more. Not last but not least. Um, quick show of my enamel dots. So nothing fancy here, kind of messy, actually not quite as organized as it should be. But this is just a fridge bin and the shelf behind me and I just keep all of my enamel dots packages in this container, kind of like in a file system. Um, I had one of my subscribers subscribers show me how they back, they take like just cardstock and back their packages of enamel dots with, with it, which helps them be a little more rigid instead of flimsy. And so that's a really good system. I haven't taken the time to do that recently, but it, it is a really great alternative. And I love being able to just flip through my enamel dots very quickly and easily, kind of like a Rolodex or a library catalog, which is really nice. So that's enamel dots. And then let me show you my six by 12s. All right. So I really enjoy organizing my six by six by 12s in a bin basket, some sort of file system. So this container is from Michaels. It fits, it's the, the drawer that fits inside the tidy cube units and they fit thickers perfectly. And it has a divider in the middle, which is really nice. But I love to be able to just flip through my thickers like this. Um, these are definitely not organized. I've, I haven't been putting things back as I should. But I have one for my alphas and one for my stickers and words and images. And so uh, once I open up the packaging and I've, um, I'll repackage these and I'll put them in these little polymer bags that are reusable. Again, you get these on Amazon. This makes a world of difference, as you can tell really easy for me to slide out and really easy for me to slide back in <laughs> compared to fighting over the original packaging. So I definitely um, recommend repackaging using these bags. And again, they're not very expensive, or at least they, they, they weren't. With inflation, I'm not really sure, but um, I bought a lot of these early on and I just reuse them as I work through the thickers. And then I keep the topper from the packaging so I know, you know, the collection so I do keep them on here and I just you know have them I did have them somewhat organized but that's kind of gone out the window so do as I say not as I do <laughs> but this just goes to show you that all of us are guilty of not putting things back exactly where they belong but um, so again if I was going to my kit and I had a, a thicker it would come over here and I would repackage it. Obviously I would take it out of this and it would go in here for filing. And that's where all of my thickers go. And with that being said, I think I have covered all of my different embellishment organizing systems, right? And as you can see, I have multiples depending on what type of product it is, um, if it's a theme or collection specific. Um, and so it's really not a one size fits all system. It really depends on you and how you look for your product. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I will link what I can below in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. All right, happy organizing. Bye.